evening. Assalamu alaikum, Mulvaney. Hi, everyone. I'm Najma. And on behalf of the Salt River Heritage Society, I would like to welcome you, our cyber audience. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Welcome to our guest of honor, SA Women's Football and National Coach, Desiree Alice. Our two panel members, the president of FC Cubstad, Zaid Omar, the only thorn amongst the roses, and Cape Peninsula University of Technology Communication Studies lecturer, Shamla Suleiman. As part of our Heritage Day celebrations, we wish to honor Banyana Banyana's national coach, Desiree Alice, who was raised in Salt River in the 1970s. Desiree's mom, Natalie Ellis, will unveil a street art portrait in Fenton Road on Saturday at our formal Heritage Day Community Arts Festival, which starts at 1.30. We hope to see you all there and ends at 6 p.m. We start at the top of Kingsley Road. So let's start at our legend. I'd like to introduce a true trailblazer. Maybe we should see her face now, Lutfi. Um, Desiree Alice. Desiree, we consider you to be a Salt River legend and trailblazer. Desiree was born, um, I don't know where you actually, I listened, I watched your mom speaking about you today. I don't know if you were born in Salt River, but I know you were raised in Salt River. Desiree is a retired footballer. She's the current head coach of South Africa's women's national football team. Desiree is a founding member of Banyana Banyana and she is its second captain. She was its second captain. Desiree played in the first match against Swaziland at international match at the age of 30, where she scored a hat-trick along with some other players. Desiree was also awarded Confederation of African Football Women's Coach of the Year in 2018. And then Desiree, under your tutelage, the national team made its debut at World Cup France 2019. It's impossible to do justice to your illustrial career in a segment like this, Desiree. You've held a myriad of senior roles in soccer and you've won a slew of awards. Welcome, Desiree. I have to apologize for the barking. So while <laughs> Desiree shows us all, we are going to, um, hi Desiree. You don't remember me, but I remember you. Hi. Um, and then I'd like to introduce our panel. Zaid Omar, or Zaid Umar, executive producer and managing director at Show Real FX, which is a television production company. Zaid is a former TV and radio sports presenter and pro producer. He's the founding member 19 years ago and president of FC Cubstead. Um, Zaid is a SAFA qualified football coach. Is a sports science graduate and he remains a scholar in the field. He's also born and bred in Salt River. Shamla Suleiman is not so, from Salt River, but she's from a neighboring suburb, um, Mome said. She's currently communication studies lecturer at CPUT since 2002. She's got a master's degree in um, transformation in SA rugby. And then she's got this sporting background that spans decades, first as an athlete and at school level, at club level, then as an administrator and leader. Um, you know, I went through Desiree's resume and it just like goes on and on and on. Um, and, but I think the thing that um, appealed to me so much is that um, Shabla is passionate about the country. Her um, signature slogan is proudly South African and proud supporter of our teams. She's passionate about transformation in sport and society. She's a voice for those who are disadvantaged and exploited, women, girls, boys, the poor, and she uses her influence to raise awareness around these and other social issues. So welcome Shamila, welcome Zaid, and welcome Ms. Desiree. And um, you, you, you're so cute still. So I need to start this by saying that 
you used to play soccer in Salt River in Hreev Street. And I watched you playing. And I used to think that's unusual, you know, for a girl to play such a fierce match, like you were a competitor for the boys. So Desi, we're gonna start with Zaid, because, you know, he's, he's the thorn amongst the roses. And he's gonna um, start with the interview. Um, thank you for being here and for making the time for us. I'm so excited about your portrait, it's finished. It's gonna be unveiled, your mom's going to be there and yeah, he's so excited. So Zaid, are you there? Yes, thanks Welcome Najma, back. thanks for the introduction. Good evening, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. And Desiree, how are you doing? After your Aisha Buhari success, yet another national championship trophy for, for Banyana. Banyana, how do you feel about that? I'm very excited. Um, we missed out on a match in July due to positive COVID cases in our camp. And when this opportunity came, we didn't hesitate. We wanted to make sure that we test ourselves. Um, and I think the players went beyond that. They were absolutely magnificent. Um, you know, in both matches, even though we had very little time with the overseas based players, but they really added a lot of value. And the behind the scenes work by the staff was just amazing. So it all came together. Now, you've, you've obviously achieved quite a lot as national team head coach since you started as an interim role. You had success right up until now. I don't necessarily want to focus on that because I think we've heard that story so many times in interviews the two of us have done on national television and radio. So I want to, I want to start at the very important part or point in, in, in my interest is where did it all start? I've, I've done some research, but I need to know, and I think everybody wants to know where it all started for Desiree Ellis. From my understanding, it, of course, as Najma said earlier, it started in the street, in Khreev Street, and of course it started in the playground at Dryden Street. But before we even go to that point as to where it actually all started, where did your interest in soccer actually start? Where did it come from? I mean, yeah, there's so many other sports you can play, both as a, as a boy or as a girl, but where specifically did the affinity to football and soccer start with you? And I what think, age? Um, at the age of six, but I think it's all down to my cousins who were all boys. Um, we all played not just football, but models and you name it, the games boys play, you know. Which cousins um, are you think... specifically referring to? We need names. <laughs> we might, we want to know if we know them and who they are. Ivor, Bradley, etc. cetera, um, Daravis, Majit, um, those are, those are basically the cousins, Ashley Fabing, who now lives in, in Canada. So it's, you know, the cousins that all stayed by my grandmother in Cliff Street, um, you know, after school, because my parents both worked and uh, we used to trek every morning, first from Hedefeld, and then when we moved to Hanover Park, every morning we used to trek to Salt River. Um, and after school, we used to stay off there after school because my parents worked. And when they came home, we went by car back to Hedefeld in, in Hanover Park, of course. And that was the, the, the daily routine. Um, even while we were in high school in Salt, at Salt River High. Um, and in the afternoon, obviously, playing with the boys in the street. We used to challenge um, Westminster Road and all the other streets we used to challenge um, as well in, in those days. But I also played in the playground of, of Dryden. They had a girls' playground and a boys' playground. And you were not allowed to go into each other's playgrounds. But I wanted to play football, and I used to jump the fence regularly to go and play. Interestingly enough, Ashley Fabing, your cousin, was at school with me. He's the same age as me, as well as your brother, uh, Basil, who's now obviously Basir. Yeah. Um, and I, from my research, determined that you uh, played with some of the boys, even though you mentioned that there were a boys' and a girls' playground at Dryden Street Primary. You ended up playing with the boys, and there was some a long list of names that I have received of um, boys who invited you to join them to play during break because you had the ability. Now, do you think your ability, which led you on to become a professional women's bowler and a national team player started, you, that skills were developed in the street and in the playground? Is that where it all developed? Look, I think so, yes. Um, you had to really be tough when you play with the boys. They didn't hold back because you were a girl. Um, you know, they were tough on you. So you had to be tough on them 
and your skill level had to improve as well because um, naturally boys can play football. So you had to make sure that, that you're better than them for the lack of a better word. Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't choose you to play. So um, in the afternoon already, like I said, they would wait at my grandmother's house when school was out already. And there was no chance of me doing anything else but just changing and going to play with the boys until, until people came, came home from work. That was the worst time because then we had to stop our game because they walked down, down the street. But definitely playing with the boys, I think it's a, it's a story for most girls back in the day starting to play football. They started playing with the boys. And I think that doesn't only harden you and build character, but it also helps you with your skill level. So apparently Shireen Filyun, Kulsum Filyun's sister, was also one of the talented girl, girls in playing along with you at Dryden Street in the playground. Um, uh, guys like Fahim Hussain, Ishmael Shafiq, uh, Quentin Allison, Fakhri Abrams, these are the guys that have mentioned where it all started for you in Dryden Street's play playground. How good was Shireen? Shireen was very good. Um, she was a very good player, but uh, she stopped playing, um, but she was really good. Uh, when we formed when we formed a, a club, she played for the club as well, but not but not for long. But she was a very very talented player as well. Interesting. Now we all know Salt River is a daunting area to grow up in terms of boys and girls teasing each other. Were you teased during that phase when you started playing with the boys in in the street and 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 in the playground? I mean, we do know Salt River is is known for for being daunting when it comes to 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 to, to your playmates teasing you and and telling you you're not good enough or whatever. No, the the, the thing was that I was told that I wanted to be a boy because I was playing <laughs> football. Um, you know, and I just shrugged that off and I just continued playing. And I mean, I had the support of my parents, even though my dad used to check my school shoes at night, and he used to tell me he was going to send me to school bare feet. And then I just got myself a pair of soccer boots that was way too big for me and started playing with that in the street um, because almost every month they needed to buy me a new pair of soccer boots, uh, so, sorry, school shoes. Um, but other than that, my parents supported me. So, you know, what every, anyone else said didn't really matter to me because I had the support of my parents and that for me, for me was big, but not in my wildest imagination did I ever think that, you know, it, it could go that far. Did you play for um, any men's teams or any men's clubs at, 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 at the start? No, um, I used to play for the school team, um, the, the, the main the teachers against the students of Salt River High. And yeah. uh, Bevan Franzman's dad, Paul Franzman, was, was a teacher. Um, and I used to play, play for them when they played the boys' team. And that's, and that's how I got scouted. But my uncle, um, Edward Ellis, always used to go play football, and I used to always go with and make sure that I have my boots stuck somewhere because I knew that it'd always be a place, there'd be someone short. And then if there was someone short, I would join them and play. And uh, at the end, they would tell whoever was playing against me, do you know that you played against a girl today? Now, a couple of years ago, you took, you went along with some of the national team players. You went to Dryden Street with those players. Why did you specifically decide or choose to go to Dryden to, with the players and have a photo shoot and, and, and make a statement at the school? Look, you see, um, we, we as, as, as role models, we need to inspire the next generation of, of, of individuals to come through, whether they go into sport or whether they don't go into sport. But we need to tell them that it doesn't matter where you come from. I mean, I went to Dryden State Primary and I don't think back then anyone, anybody thought that I would represent the national team. So we just wanted to take, take them back. Um, the, the, the sponsor Cecil does a, a CSI program and um, because I am from Cape Town and we played in Cape Town. They decided um, to, to go to the school because I think the Andres Meader um, is from um, uh, Feldriff, which was more than two hours outside of Cape Town. And normally they don't need to do the, do the coach. Normally they go to a play school. But because I grew up in Salt River, they decided to go to Dryden City Primary School. Um, and it was an amazing day. The kids were the kids were just in awe of the players that were there. So it was really, really exciting. It's going to take a player who comes from, or myself who comes from a community to show that, you know, you can also um, achieve your dream. You know, your dreams are valid. So if you, if you get the opportunity, grab it with both hands. And I think that was just the message basically to take to the, to the, to the young kids at Dryden City uh, Primary to say, 
I also went to the school and look where I am now. So what stops you? What stops you from achieving? Fantastic. That's really inspirational from you. And, and on behalf of the community, we have to thank you for that. Now, before I move any further, obviously, back in your day, there was no women's soccer team in Salt River. A couple of years ago, I think two years ago, Salt River Blackpool actually established their first ever women's team. And I think that's also a testament to, to what you, to the work you've done, the trail you've, you've blazed for uh, women football in South Africa. I actually attended the first training session when they had this all these players come together. And my brother asked me if I could come down. And luckily, I was in Cape Town at the time because I currently obviously live in Joburg. So I went down and um, um, Iqbal invited me to come down. And, and it, was, it was really good to see these young kids. And my brother keeps updating me on how the team is doing, sending me videos and, and sending me scores of the team. So it's really fantastic that it has grown from from just being a couple of girls at training to now being, you know, a team. And it shows that if you, you, you create opportunities and then and the kids grab it, and that is what happens. So I was really excited to be there. Um, you know, I always make time because I always think of the next individual um, who has a dream, who wants to live their dream. And I always think that if, if I can just in, inspire one individual, you know, um, because People always ask, how do you want to be remembered? And I always say um, that I have made a difference. So me signing an autograph, um, me talking to someone, is going to take one or two minutes out of my day, not my whole day. So I make time for that because at the end of the day, those are the young kids that will go to go home tonight and keep on talking about, you know, the national team was there and Coach Dez said this to me. I remember there was a, there was a 10 year old girl that um, played at, at Esco and she messaged me on, on, on Facebook and asked me um, and said she would like to play for Banyana Banyana one day. And I asked her what, what, where does she play? And, and, and I just pitched up there. Um, and she reminded me a couple of years later, she's now at Hellenic. She reminded me a couple of years later how just that little visit inspired her. Fantastic. Before I hand over to Najma and Shamila, Desiree, what is your current football philosophy? You've achieved a lot. And during your phase as national team head coach, you've had to obviously evolve that philosophy based on players aging and moving on. So you've always moving with a new crop of players, but you're still having success. What is the recipe? What's your philosophy that you think has led to you being successful thus far? Look, we've always said that, um, especially in women's football in the South African team, we're not a very tall group of of, of, of players and we have the, the the natural ability and the talent and the creativity so we want to put the ball on the on the, on the ground and we want to play but we want to make sure that we are as fit as possible because we cannot compete with the west africans by playing the ball in the air we cannot compete with the cameroonians we cannot compete even with the north africans so yeah we have to stay, yeah, yeah we have to stay stay true to who we, who we are and it's a process you know it didn't have this um, the, the victory against Nigeria didn't happen overnight. It's been a process of how we want to play, um, obviously, and our overseas base players coming in and adding that extra, you know, that they've, that they've gained abroad has really taken a team to the new level. And I think, um, you know, the big thing for us was getting the victory in Nigeria. Um, it's massive because you, you go to Nigeria and you don't, you don't, you don't come away with the win at all. So that sure. for us is telling us that, yes, we might have missed the game in July against the Netherlands, but we definitely are on the right track. But you must know that even though we beat Nigeria, it doesn't mean that we're the best now. You know, yeah. they're not the number one ranked team in Africa for nothing. So we got to stay focused and we got to keep working. Finally, what do you think is the difference between South Africa's uh, women's team or football in comparison to that of the top women's footballing nations in the world like America and Sweden and, 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 and Germany, for example. What do you think is the difference? Do we need more South African women team players to play abroad in Europe and in America to develop in order for us to be able to compete against it? Or do we just need to stay, to, stay true to our philosophy and that process you referred to? Look, I think professionalizing the sport in the country um, is also big because then... Um, players get to train at the uh, train every single day and not having to worry about going to study and you know going to 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 work etc. 
But uh, I think we, we, we're going the right direction. We have the Hollywood Bet Super League. Uh, that's now National League. It's not where we want to be, but it's a step in the right direction. But players going abroad um, and playing in the best leagues. Um, Tembi plays in Spain. The Fiume Chani plays in yeah. Italy, um, sure. you know, for AC Milan. Tembi plays for Atletico Madrid. Linda plays in Sweden. Those are top leagues. And you can see the quality that they have brought to the national team. Um, yeah. You know, so we have a lot more players that are playing abroad. And we hope that doing that will also inspire the players back home because we also need to get the mix right of, of youth and experience, but also local and abroad. Um, because we have a lot of talented players here as well. And I think in this tournament, we got it almost spot on, um, not just in the way we played, but the players that shone was a mix of, of, of both local and overseas based players. And we, 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 we just want to stay true to who we are. And we, we want to play the way we want to play and make sure that through that we get the successes. Fantastic. One always wonders what would have happened had Desiree Ellis played abroad back in the day. I'll, 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 I'll hand it over to Najma and Shamil on that note. Thank you, Zaid, for that. Desiree is so inspiring. I hope that there are young people watching or attending this webinar because, you know, you have so much experience and you give so much of yourself. And um, I've had the opportunity at a, it was Blackpool, um, Salt River Blackpool, you were, you were at a presentation of award ceremony and I saw the compassion and the humility that you um, portray, you know, when you deal with young people. And um, so you are such an inspiration. I'm going to ask Shamila now to go ahead. Shikra Najma, um, good evening Desre, and good evening to our attendees. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an absolute honor to be here with you. Um, and of course, I think it was just over a year ago when we had you on the sports webinar, the sports coalition webinars um, with the Women's Month uh, interviews. So it's an absolute honor um, to see you again. You're looking good and you're looking even better after that fantastic win against Nigeria um, two days ago. So well done, Liz. I'm really proud of you and proud moments for the nation. Um, I was happy to hear that there wasn't a Salt River Girls football team when you were playing football, because just up the road in Warmia State, we had a, a Sunday league um, going and we had three girls teams and I played for one of them. So I'm quite happy that there wasn't one in Salt River because it would have had you guys playing against us. And of course you would have been the star in there. But uh, Desiree, just in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm obviously gonna talk about uh, women in sports and focus on women and girls in sports. Now, growing up in Salt River and, and of course, considering the era um, when you grew up in Salt River, where for most, uh, you know, for, for, for the most part, we were not really exposed to international, even national sports stars. So from your perspective, you know, and while you were growing up, what women in sports did you look up to when you were growing up? Who were your heroes, your sporting heroes at the time? Honest, and, hopefully, had, and hopefully women also. <laughs> to be honest, I had male um, male stars that I looked up to really. Um, and Zayd is going to laugh at me for this. I'm a huge Man United fan. Yeah. No, no, you can't oh, laugh. You just, no, that's the intelligent you know. choice. That's the intelligent choice. Well done, Des. Well uh, done. <laughs> I mean, I'm a huge Man United fan. So Brian Robson. Don't, we won't Brian, talk about last night's result. Don't worry. No, definitely not. It was horrible. <laughs> Ryan Robson, Ryan Giggs, and of course, in South Africa, the late Shoes Mashoyo. He just, he was just um, a superstar. Um, he carried himself with a plum, you know, both on and off of the field. He was a, was a true gentleman. So those are basically the, the people that I, that I really looked up to, you know. Um, and the reason yeah. why Brian Robson, I played in a similar position. So I tried to model myself on being a box-to-box -box midfielder. Ryan Giggs, just for this... For the sheer ability that he had, you know, to change a game within a within a dribble, um, to change the game just like that. So those those were were really my my, my role models. Okay, and 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 just in terms of other sporting codes, you know, I I, I know, especially you know, in the eighties, we and and we were really limited, as I said, especially in terms of 
uh, television, uh, you know, and sporting codes. But definitely, you know, we saw quite a bit of tennis. So you were either at the time a, a Martina fan or you were a Chris Ebert fan. Um, I, was, so no, I, was a, I was a Chris Ebert fan, though. Okay. <laughs> she was very, she okay. was very stylish. I was a Chris yes. Ebert fan. Okay, okay. No, good to hear. At least there were some we were featuring there. Now, now, this research, of course, shows us that for most sporting codes and globally, women are a majority when it comes to spectators. And of course, they also participate in all sporting codes, whether as athletes, administrators, coaches, referees, and even boardroom leaders. But you probably know, of course, what's coming next. So in spite of this, women in sport and women and girls in sport are faced with, you know, they have to assume a secondary position when it comes to any or in fact all facets of sport. Why do you think this is the case? And, and, and what do you think is the biggest barrier, um, not only for, for, for visibility, but also for the importance and the hype around women's sports? And perhaps you can even relate your own journey as a woman in sport um, in, in respect of answering this question? I think um, for me, it's all about belief, um, you know, and, and what my worth was. Um, I knew what my value was. I went ahead and, and did my coaching badges. I went um, abroad and did a coaching course in Germany. I worked with the Dutch Football Association with the project that, that was running in South Africa up until the World Cup called Stars in the Eyes, a community project. So I made sure that I equipped myself um, you know, I think that is the important thing. And then when the opportunity comes, we are afraid to grab that opportunity. Like our former Miss Universe said, we must, we must take up the space. The space doesn't belong to any one individual. We must take up the space. But sometimes we are afraid to fail. You cannot succeed if you, if you haven't failed because how do you then celebrate the successes if you haven't failed? I mean, these games that we've lost 7-1, we lost to, Nor uh, to Norway 7-2 before the World Cup but it didn't dampen our spirits because that happens in the sport. So take up the space, but equip yourself. Make sure that when the opportunity comes, that you step into that, into that opportunity. Um, when the position came up for head coach, I didn't hesitate. Um, it was then up to you know, the, 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 the people in, 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 in the positions to decide whether they wanted me as the head coach or not. But you've got to believe and you've got to know that you are capable and you, that you are worthy. And sometimes... We, we're afraid to take up that opportunity because we're afraid to fail. Yeah, and, 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 and obviously, you know, there's, there's, you are, as, as Naj, both Najma and Zaid mentioned, you definitely a trailblazer, you know, when it comes to, to, to football in particular, but also as a, as a woman in sport. So what does it mean to you to be a woman in sport? It means to me that it doesn't matter who I am, where I come from, what my circumstances are, that I'm able to do what I love doing, you know, and that I'm able to, to take the opportunity up without thinking that it's not gonna go well or without thinking that it's not going to happen. Um, I have the support of my, of, my, of my family. First, my late father was, oh, he was my biggest critic. Uh, whenever I played, it wasn't good enough. Um, yeah. But I suppose that helped me. That helped me to become the person and the player that that I that I that I was and and person that I am today. And my mother then took up that mantle and became not just my biggest supporter, but also my pre warrior. And obviously, my family. You know, I I, I live in in Johannesburg, not at home. So we we on a, we chat on a regular basis. And I think um, that is that for me. You know, is was the most important thing. Absolutely, and I listened to your rendition of the story of the 10 year old girl that you went to watch and how she's playing um, for Hellenic now. So you've obviously been an inspiration for, for so many, you know, for girls and for other women in sport. And, 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 and this is what it's about, you know, it's about setting, setting the stage for others to follow. It's about breaking glass ceilings, um, particularly for other women and girls to follow. And, you know, there's so many, Whenever, you know, and it doesn't matter whether you're from Salt River or not, but if you are from Cape Town, you know, Cape Townians have this habit that if you're from Cape Town, we all take ownership of you. And we all, when you succeed, we all succeed. So, you know, for other girls, 
in communities like Salt River? What, what would your advice be for them? And especially if they're just starting out in sports. Look, you must fall in love with the game as well, first of all. Um, you know, fall in love with the game and make sure that you that you work hard because yes, you have the talented ones. Um, I always think I wasn't that talented because when I play with some players, I'm just amazed at what they do with the ball, but I trained really hard. Um, yes, Zaid, even at the age of 30, I used to train every single day. And then I'd play the Saturday and the Sunday I'm back on the training field. Um, I got myself a personal trainer at the time to help me. He used to work with, he used to work with, he used to work with Bafana Bafana. So I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, in a good physical shape to be able to do that. And I worked on my skill. I mean, I tell the players nowadays, I used to kick the ball against the wall and go further back and kick it harder, or mm. throw the ball on the roof and come down and hit it to a spot. And they laugh at me, but I needed to hone my skills because when the opportunity came to me to go to the national team, um, you know, I, I was ready. Um, so make sure that you that you work hard at your craft, make sure that you that you can be the best that you can be every day. It's all about being better every day. Sometimes you want to compete with the next individual, but each individual is different. So if you are better every day, that says that you are putting in the work. And when the opportunity comes, then be ready. Be ready and be ready to grab the opportunity. Thanks, thanks, Des. Now, obviously tomorrow we're celebrating Heritage Day in South Africa. Um, it's an important public holiday, of course. Um, you coach and manage a diverse squad of players and of course management staff as well. So diverse in terms of race, culture, and of course, backgrounds. What's this been like for you managing this diversity? And, and, and what are some of the challenges and some of the benefits of this experience? I think the most important thing is to treat each other with respect. Doesn't matter who they are. Um, um, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a coach that micromanage. Um, I've got a lot of expertise around me and I allow those people to use their expertise. Yes, I step in so now and then, but they are the experts. The same with the players. We have a captain's group. We don't have one captain. We have a captain's group. We have a leadership group. So sometimes when we need to make certain decisions, we sit, sit around the table and we, and we speak. You know, um, We always ask players how things are at home. Um, one of the players in the national team, I've never, ever met a granny um, face to face, but I've been chatting with a grandmother forever. Um, so that's, that's the most important thing. And to support them, you know, when they have initiatives, um, to support their initiatives and to treat them, I think, to treat them with, with respect. And I always say you cannot be a coach and not care. I think that is, that is the most important key is to care um, because that's the most important thing for players. You must remember that they all come from different backgrounds, um, you know, and we don't know what happens at home. Um, so we have to make sure that when they come to the camp, that it's a home away from home. Excellent. Thank you so much, Coach Dees. I'm sure I'll get another opportunity to put in a question or two, uh, but for now, I'll hand you over to Najma. Thank you so much. Desre, you are, you are so amazing. I'll tell you why. I'm a teacher, Desre, um, and um, you lived, or you, you were, you, I saw you next to my aunt house in Creve Street onto D.I. Tigla. And um, my cousins, I hope, are watching you, Nawal and Nuran. But you know, I, I've learned so much in the short time because we teach leadership to learners. And um, I've been circling things you've been saying about leadership. And I, I, I've um, done the research on you and I realize that you are such a natural leader um, because the team has done, Banyana Banyana has done so well under your coaching, your management. Um, I don't think they know what they have with you. But I mean, I've circled with a lot of things. You're humble, you respect the people who work with you, who work under you, you, you don't micromanage. So you respect their talents and their ability to be themselves. You care and you, you try to be your best to live. You make sure that you, you better yourself all the time and you make sure you're ready to grab the opportunity. So a well done to you. I want to ask you a few questions related to Salt River. 
but um, maybe you should put yourself on the screen so that we can see you, Desiree. Enable your video. My video and then, is on. Uh, My video is on. <laughs> okay, all right. So you know who I'm speaking of, Nawal Nuran, Tigla. No. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. It's because you were so young, but okay. We'll forgive you for that. So Desiree, some things came up and my questions are, I just got immersed into the other ladies' questions, but I mean, Zayden and Shamla's questions. And you know, the fact that you always knew what your value is. Um, so as a child, um, that now currently you work as a, a soccer pundit, an expert, a consultant, a commentator on TV. You were also an ambassador for 20 Tech. Najma, you you breaking up? We can't hear you. I think it's the, I think the screen froze. Oh. Um, perhaps Desiree, we can look at uh, there's some questions in the chat group from our uh, attendees. So maybe we can look at one or two of those questions while Najma gets herself back in action. So we have a question from Shabudin who says. Um, do you get any support, advice, or technical assistance from the management of Bafana Bafana? Well, the previous coach of Bafana Bafana, Coach uh, Nseki, we always used to chat on a regular basis, um, as well as um, the assistant coach, as well as David Notwani, the under-23 coach, um, the acting technical director now, Coach Franz, on a regular basis. I've uh, in, sat with and greeted uh, uh, Coach Hugo, but we haven't really sat down because our parts haven't really crossed. When they're in camp, we on the other side. When they go away from camp, we go into camp. But there's definitely the plan is to 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 sit down. But we do get a lot of support. Yes, technical advice as well. I think the acting TD had sent me a message yesterday just before he traveled back, and he said, um, unfortunately, he won't be um, at the office for us to to get a catch up after after the tournament, which which I always do. And then we end up for an hour or two talking about the game and, and going on to the, the flip chart, et cetera. So there's a lot of support from, from that side, definitely. Excellent. But uh, perhaps you should be giving them more support uh, <laughs> rather than the other way around, just in terms of the results. Um, I'm not sure if Najma's on yet, but we can take another question. Um, there is a question from Lutti, um, just to ask you how you felt about the fact that the Salt River uh, uh, Heritage Society was doing a mural for you in Salt River. How did it make you feel? Um, I'll be honest, I was super excited, um, but I was always, I also thought this is just simply amazing, but um, I was a bit shy about it. <laughs> it might sound strange, but I was a bit shy about it and I, I found my brother and I said, you know what, these people are going to do a mural. Um, what do you think? And I said to him, um, this is fantastic. And as the mural was going on, he was sending me pics of how it was going. And I said, I'm like real Cape Townian. This is quite, you know, I said, this is amazing. And then I got a call from the artist and, and um, we had a little bit of a chat. And it was quite exciting that they chose a, a female to do the, the, the mural as well. Um, and when I went on Facebook and checked her, and checked her Facebook page, um, I saw that she was really talented. So I knew that she was going to do a really, really good job. But I couldn't have imagined that it would come out like that. My brother took a picture just of, of me, my, my head shot. And that was, that really, really stood out for me. Did you, okay, share, so did you, I think you... Did you share those images of the mural with your players in camp and with your national team colleagues? I only, they, shared, I only shared it with the colleagues. I didn't share it with the players. I just wanted them to concentrate on the game because the time was so little in between. But oh, it um, could have been they, an inspirational people. Uh, they were they were they were really, really amazed and so excited. And uh, a former coach even asked, could he post this? And I said, No, you can't. I'm just showing <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, because he was really, really excited about it. So um, 
Um, even the media officer, when I showed her yesterday while we were traveling back, she says, wow, you know, can't we do a story? So I said, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't take the shine away from the Salt River heritage. Let's do it after. It's so wonderful. Are you ready to answer my question? I don't know what happened. Yes, to I you. am. Yes, I am. Did you always believe that you could become a professional soccer player without there being a team I always that you could wanted. look to? I always wanted to. Um, back in the day during the apartheid year, it was it was a dream, to be honest. Mm. Um, it was a dream to to play for the national team. It was a dream mm. to play abroad. It was a dream to do all of those things. Um, I just kept on playing and praying that the opportunity would come. And when it did come to come to the national team, I, I didn't hesitate. I didn't hesitate, even though I lost my job and, and was out of work for three years. Um, I didn't hesitate because um, I was not living my dream. Mm. At what point did soccer become a viable career option for you? Look, I won't say it was a career option back then. Yes, now as the head coach, I'm an employee, but um, I'm just blessed that I'm getting paid for doing what I love. But back then, mm. I, I had a job as well after, um, you know, I had a job um, after that three years. Um, and, I, and I played for the national team. Um, our football in our country is not fully professional yet, so you cannot make a career out of, out of that. So you needed to either study or work. Um, and most times I had to take unpaid leave. So by the time, by the time um, one camp was gone, I had no leave. So I would have to take unpaid leave and the bonus and the allowances that we got, I had to make sure that I didn't spend it like everyone else because I knew that I was not gonna get a full paycheck at the end of the month. Mm. Last um, week, according to Zaid, I didn't see the reports, but the American um, Sports Association, who is the organization, decided that all professional sports people uh, would have equality in salaries. Do you know about that? So they, the, Ameri they, the Americans, they, yeah, I've been fighting yeah. this fight for a long time, is it? Yeah, the American Football Federation has equal the earnings of the men's football team players to that right. of the female football players. So referring to mm. you, Referring to what you said earlier, Desiree, about you know your worth, should the South African men's players or the South African women's team, the Banyana team, your side, earn the equivalent of the Bafana Bafana team players, which is what they achieved in America? And that's obviously look, got to do with what your worth is. Look, um, at the moment, uh, I know the allowances and that are the same. Um, the Federation has come out and said that. But I think it all comes down to sponsorship. You know, we only have, we only have Cecil, um, and we need more sponsors to come on board because that will bridge the gap. That will bridge the gap completely for sure. for maybe for maybe the national team to get to get to get pay to get more money. The same as in the league. Um, you know, up until Hollywood bets came along, um, the prize money was very little. Now the prize money for the winning team in the Hollywood bet Super League is two million rand. So if sponsors can come on board along with Cecil and Hollywood Bets, then surely things will change. Things will change for the better. Um, mm -hmm. So all the time, sponsors have been urged to come on board. Just imagine if Banyana had Cecil and maybe three or four other sponsors. That would definitely be possible, yes, for, for, for salary increases or whatever you, 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 you call it. But it's not possible at this moment. And I think um, you also have to thank the federation for always making opportunities for us, um, even though we have one one sponsor. So if, if more sponsors come on board, then that would definitely be a, poss a possibility. Yeah. So what to what extent or to what extent does the role of media play in promoting women's sports coverage? I because then you get sponsors. Yeah. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, no, um, I still want to want to ask uh, potential uh, uh, organizations that works with sponsorship what they are looking for. You know, mm. there must be something that they are looking for that maybe women in sport are maybe not doing. Um, because you look at Custer Simia. Um, I mean, she's gone and conquered the world, and yet she struggles to get big sponsors. You know, so maybe. 
somebody who's in sponsorship can tell us exactly what it is that they're looking for because there's so many female product companies out there and and with Banyana qualifying for the World Cup, qualifying for Olympics, etc., cetera, um, who wouldn't want to sponsor a, a team like that? So I'm saying we should find out by sponsorship companies what it is exactly that they're looking for. What do you think the difference is for audiences between male sport and female sport? Why is the um, sort of gravitation to supporting male sport as opposed to female sport? Look, when you when you when you go to any match, um, the Kaiser Chiefs, the Orlando Pirates, and then will have a fully packed stadium. And I think the more exposure women is given, I think the more support right. they will get. But Don't. it doesn't start. It doesn't start with male supporting women. It starts with us women. Me going to a cricket match of the protea women, me going to a netball match. It starts there. If we want others to support us, then we need to start that doing that by ourselves and make sure that we as women support each other. And if we can do it, then then obviously the men will also support because they are they are families, they're families and they will come along and support. I remember years ago um, when we were on our way to the soccer field, um, just getting out of the taxi and going to the soccer field at, at Cape District and these guys walking and saying, oh, we've got nothing to do today, let's go. Let's go have a good laugh. Let's go watch this woman play. And funny enough, they became my biggest supporters because they hadn't realized that the woman was so talented and that the woman could play. Um, so up until you really see a match and up until we really go there, you have a different perception. So I always say our performances, our results will change minds and perception and that's all we can do. Yeah, that's a brilliant point. That is such a good point. I want to ask you just a few things, a few things. Um, what advice, but I think we've gotten through this, advice do you have for girls and women um, to push through barriers and ceilings? I think you answered it already when you said, just try to be your best every day when the opportunity comes and you go for it. But how do you break through barriers? Look, there's, uh, there's always... always there's always going to be that stumbling block. Um, and I always say, if you just give up there, then the next stumbling block is going to catch you a little bit earlier. And because mm -hmm. you've given up so easily, you then give up even more easier. So yes, push through that barrier and things might still not go for you, but consistently push through because eventually, eventually the barrier breaks. But if you don't push through, you'll end up going further and further backwards because your Mm. Your, your push through becomes less now. It becomes where it was maybe halfway and you can't push through. The next time it's caught away, you fail to push through. The next time you're almost at the beginning, but you consistently, consistently have to push through. I always say it's about belief. If you don't believe you can do it, then you shouldn't be doing it. Totally. It all starts in the mind. Um, I want to say this to you. Also, as you break through barriers, you become stronger and you develop the skills to break through other barriers, to break through greater barriers. Very good life skill. Then, growing up in Salt River for me has left lasting memories. I, I have very good memories of Salt River. I don't remember ever being teased. I don't know if I was living in, in Utopia, but I have very good memories of Salt River. And Salt River for me to this day, um, has a particular vibe, you know, that community spirit. Have you encountered the same energy or spirit elsewhere? Because you've lived in other parts of the world. Um, I think even though, even though you're at the club, it's still a community. And mm -hmm. when I go to community tournaments, it's just amazing to see all the people that come out and support all the teams that are there. Um, and that has been the norm, especially in football. Um, over, the, over the December holidays, there's such a lot of tournaments in Johannesburg and uh, the surrounding areas that the stadiums are, or the stadium is actually packed to capacity because those, fee, those um, tournaments are in the community and it's different tournaments run almost at the same time, in different, different areas and they're still completely packed. Because after all, even though it's club, there's still community. So they come out and they come out and support. 
But the one thing I always remember when I go to my brother in South Africa, I always go around and drive down um, Westminster Road and look up Griff Street and see not a child in the street. And that is so sad because back in the day, um, we played until the people came from work. And we'd wait and wait and look around until there were less people coming and we'd restart our game. And the next minute, people would come again and, and we'd be so angry because now we can't finish our game. And nowadays you don't see kids in the street playing anything anymore. I'm muting myself every time because there's dog barking. There's a dog barking and it's our dog. Um, so Desi, I want to ask you one more question. Um, what naughty things or rebellious things did you do in South Africa growing up? Because I think <laughs> we grew up in a time when you could be rebellious, run around late in the evenings from your one cousin to the next, from the one road to the next, and know that you're safe. You know, I did that. But children don't have that sort of, um, that don't have that opportunity anymore. Well, the, un what only, re did you do? the only rebellious thing that I did was, you know, when you come out from school, you're, my auntie would say, come here, let me look in your head. And I said, no, I got a game on. That was the only rebellious thing that I really did. Um, you know, I remember, I remember also um, the, the, the um, athletics. I remember the athletics and we'd come on very late and my granny would be waiting for us and saying that mm. my mother spoke so many times and so on. And if I was not at home and I was by my granny, my mother would phone a thousand times to find out if I'm indoors. And the one thing that not many people know, I used to walk around a lot. My mother then looked for me one day and me and a friend who lived across the road, standing on Salt Road Station waiting to take the train. <laughs> to where? I don't know, but waiting to take the train. Did you do that too, where you got onto the train, didn't pay for a ticket and and go all the way to Woodstock and town and Cape Town stations and then come back again just as a joy ride. No, no, I didn't. I just got my friend and we stood hands together and we were just going to get into, into the train. We, I can't even remember where we were going, but we were just going to get into the train. And my mother then were looking for me high and low. And um, my mother used to say I used to walk around a lot. Yeah, I think you have a you have a free spirit. You are a free spirit. Um, there's there, I think um, Salt River Dryden Primary. They want you to give a shout out to them. They want um, you to say something about your time at Dryden and maybe some of your memories and then say hi to them because they are watching. I, do you know that I actually did ballet at Dryden Street Primary with, with the Mr. Jacobs? I was on blocks. And I was at really? the Ian group. Not many people know that. I think that's maybe what helped me with my balance. Um, yeah. I did, I did a bit of athletics at school um, as well. Um, but the time, the, the, the best is, was, was, the, was the time we, we had lunch breaks where we could, we could go play um, in the playground. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see kids doing that anymore either. Um, you know, and people, yeah, people used to say, I don't know why she wants to, she wants to act like a boy. You know, I had short hair, flat chested and everything back then in the days and so on. But those were the, those were the amazing moments for me that I could just, that I could just play. I don't think many kids play, but that I could just play. And the rivalry was when it came to sports, that was Dryden Street and Cecil Road Primary. And that was the, that was the biggest rivalry, the biggest rivalry. And most times when I was there, we, while I was there, we came out on top. Not because well, <laughs> of me though, but we came out on top. I was at um, Cecil Road, but I was never an athlete. So I've always had this silent secret admiration for athletes. What do you do now to stay fit? Um, actually I contracted COVID in December. And since then I really, not done any running of any sorts. Um, I do something called walking exercises where you walk around and you walk up and down and you raise your knees and stuff. And when we're in camp, our fitness trainer is also from Cape Town. 
we would work at in the gym and he would really, really work us hard. Um, so those are basically the things. And because I, I live in the complex, I can walk around in the complex, um, et cetera. Um, mm. So those are maybe the little things that I try to, 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 to exercise. And sometimes uh, there's just too much work to be done um, that you don't get time to exercise. But I no. always try to exercise though. I think that's everybody's problem. I think everybody, as you grow older, somehow your your um, schedule becomes tighter. However, you know, as you grow older, you should actually. I think it's um, just an. I think it's maybe just an excuse to say we're busy. Do you think so? Yeah. <laughs> you're a natural talent. You're a natural athlete. I do. You always. You know. You always. There's always time. There's always a moment where you make time for everything. I mean, God hasn't given us um, 24 hours in a day. It's not enough for us to do whatever we want to do. Mm, totally, absolutely. Not, there there are some um, comments on the Facebook uh, page uh, while we're streaming. And I'm, I just Lutfi, read, you go ahead. Okay, I just want to read it. Uh, Anwar Hassan. Uh, oh, uh, you know, Anwar. oh, I played soccer with him. <laughs> yeah. He says, Desiree, tell them how you kick the boys in your tackles and trick them with your skills. What a star you are. I remember him really well. We played together. Yeah. Then Iqbal Kaskar says, uh, Desiree Ellis is an inspiration to all. The success of Banyana Banyana and the fact that Desiree is from Salt River is the reason why Salt River Blackpool started the girls' uh, football. Uh, uh, Desiree attended our first training session. She was meant to talk and inspire the girls. But she ended up taking the training session, always willing to go the extra mile. So that's that's from uh, Iqbal Kaska. I think there's some questions in the in the chat as well. Uh, Shamila, would you want to read out those questions? Sure, Lutfi. We, um, we have a, a, a question from Shahid. Shahid says, Desiree, as a fellow ex Dryden Street Primary School student, what inspiration? did your school play in your development as a learner and as a sports person and it's from Shahid Khan I think a lot that's where I learned to play that's where I played football if it wasn't in the street of the school then it was there on the playground we had very strict teachers very very strict teachers I was so scared of them we had the Scallows and Mr. Samuels and all of them very strict teachers so in that way they taught us a lot of discipline and I think discipline doesn't just only happen in in, 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 on, sp on the sports field, but it happens in your personal life as well. So they, they taught us a lot of discipline and then, and then respect, of course, you know, respect the teachers. I don't think that happens a lot nowadays, but I think that, uh, that has helped a lot. And I can always think back of, 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 of the teachers making sure that we stood straight in the line, that we went out of order. And I think that, that really builds you already. You know, it builds you, you don't realize it then, but it already bowls you from a very young age. Great stuff. And then Shabuddin asks, do you think that Banyana, Banyana could win the World Cup? We have a long way to go. Um, there are a lot of good teams. Um, um, I was asked the question after we beat Nigeria, are we the best? And I said, no, we're not the best. We just won this match. We've got to consistently do what Nigeria has done to be the best. Um, I always say that an African country that's going to win the World Cup will be a women's team. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, if I'm realistic, we're a little bit away from winning the World Cup, um, but we will be realistic in qualifying for the World Cup and trying to go out of the group stages. That's a little bit more realistic. Um, we don't have a professional league. You're competing with um, countries that have players that play professionally and maybe have more resources than you. So. Um, but nothing is impossible. Um, on the day you can play well and, and get a result and play well and get a result. Nothing is impossible. But um, um, the next World Cup, um, I'm not too sure. And I don't think people should look at it in a negative way when I say um, that we um, next World Cup is definitely not, we won't be ready to win it. But in the future, we possibly could because we have the talent. We've just got to make sure that we develop it properly and make sure that we um, consistently um, improve and consistently get results against the bigger countries, and that will help us. Excellent. Thanks, Des. And then Stanton Smith says, uh, good evening, Des.
could you do us a favor and give your alma mater a personalized motivational message to the young men and women of the modern day Trident Street Primary School, please? Okay, I don't know what he means by the modern day, but um, <laughs> your school is a school. <laughs> but, um, you know, you don't realize how important your school years are because you tend to want to brush it aside as if, as if um, it's just school, but it's not school. It's a teaching ground, not just, yeah. the, not just in the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. So you have to grab that opportunity when that opportunity comes where you are being taught because those are lessons that you can use later in life. And, and that's what I've done. That's what I've done. So um, just to the, to the pupils and um, the teachers, um, thank you for playing a part in my, in my growth. Um, the teachers, but to the pupils, they have the opportunity. Sometimes it's not what you want to hear, but it's the right thing. Um, you don't realize it then. Um, and use every opportunity that you can while you're at school to be, become better. And in that way, um, it will drive you to who you want to be one day because you can be whoever you want to be. Nobody stops you from becoming the president, becoming um, you know, um, the next principal, et cetera. Nobody stops you. You just got to make sure that um, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you have a goal, that you push, pursue it with everything that you have and make sure that you have support around you to, to make sure that you achieve that goal. There's many kids out there that maybe as a parent who's working um, and not able to attend their matches or so. So the coach becomes that inspiration um, and make sure that you use that to change um, not just your, your life, but the circumstances of everybody around you. We've seen it happen with players that have gone abroad and, and got opportunities and never thought back then that it would happen. Here's a really interesting question from Kashif Majit. He says, ask Desri how she played rugby, soccer, and cricket in Hrithia Street. And what was used as a rugby ball? We see her scratching her head there. <laughs> as I said, it's an interesting question. A long I'm time sure ago. Going to I can't remember me. what you're right. We played, we played all the sports. Um, cricket, rugby, you name it. We played all the sports, but but I, I really can't remember, to be honest. Maybe you must refresh my memory. And maybe, maybe when it, got, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe when it refreshes us. my memory, I'll just burst out laughing. <laughs> I think that's that's the questions for now, Luffy. Um, and hopefully Kashif can can tell us what was used as a rugby ball. Should be interesting. <laughs> we nearly at the end. You use um, you know, Desiree, there's so many life lessons, so many um tools you're giving for other leaders. Zaid, Zaid, do you have a few more questions, particularly Salt River related? I see uh, some questions in the in the Q and A. Um, I'm not seeing them for some reason. Uh, do you have to do yes. homework of the opposition way before match? Oh yes, we definitely do. That is that is that is so 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 key for us. You know, last year um, when we went to the Kusafa Cup, we hadn't played for about seven months. There was no football for about seven months, and we took a new group of players. So. It was so important to do opposition analysis to make sure that the players know what they're up against because it was new players, um, you know, and our performance analyst back then was also from the Western Cape. She's now the head coach of South Sudan. Did a fantastic job in making sure that, you know, we broke it down into how they build up, how they transition from defense to attack, who the key players are, the set pieces, et cetera. So the players added as much information as they can Similarly, with, with whoever we play against, we make sure that we have as much information as we can. Um, we play 20 minutes of the, 10 minutes to 20 minutes of the match, so they have a look. And then we become more specific in build-ups and transition, et cetera, and then even more specific in set pieces. But we don't concentrate too much on that. We also have to concentrate on who we are and how we want to play. So we make sure that players have a look at training sessions, and make sure that players get the clips as well to have a look at how they can improve. And we have a look at the training sessions as well. And if we see that we've missed something, we will call in players and sit down with them and explain what it is that we want, et cetera. So yes, very important. If you are not doing analysis and I'm not sure how you are you know, getting to know your opposition and 
informing your players of what they're up against. Uh, Desi, I can just pose, uh, I think, a final question from our side. We recently saw Mark Williams coming, um, you know, uh, coming out with his book, publishing his book and um, an autobiography, and he was he felt very strongly that he needed to, to write it in his own words. And so I think the burning question on everybody's lips is, when are we going to see that book? When are we going to see the story of Desiree Ellis? Many people have asked me that question over the years. Um, and I have a friend here in Janice who's busy getting a publisher for me, Munira, who's busy getting a publisher for me to do a book. I haven't started, to be honest. I haven't started, but um, I think maybe it's definitely the way to go. Um, and I think it, it should be more of an inspirational book than, than, than anything else because players see, think that's who I am when they see me on TV. Um, that's not who I am. I also come from a community. I've also had hardships. I've also had failures, uh, et cetera. So I think telling a story, um, you know, is, a, is an inspiration to everyone. And I think everyone has a story to tell. And every story that each individual um, tells um, inspires someone else. So I'm not sure when, um, but hopefully in the not too distant future, there will be something. Um, like I said, she's busy getting a publisher. And hopefully um, that will happen. That's good I news. That's... I see there's two more questions. How do you decide the formation 433? Okay, the beauty of this Banyana Banyana team is that we don't play one formation. If you watched our game against Nigeria, we changed in the game from playing, and we were very attack minded. We changed from playing a 4 1 3 to in attack to a, to a 1 4 1 4 1 in defense. To a 4 2 3 1 um, when we were a little bit under the cosh. So, the beauty of the players is they are very versatile. And um, at Kosafa last year, we played in the 4 3 3 with one sitter because we had very good creative players. And we played in the 4 3 3 um, at the World Cup. We played in the 1 4 1 4 1. And in the second match, we played uh, a 3 5 2 um, because they had pushed so many players up. So, the beauty of this team is that. They can play in so many different formations, but we try to stick to who we are um, and try to stay true to what we want to play and um, try to utilize the players on the field if we want to change a formation. And if we're not able to with the players on the field, then we'll have to make a tactical substitution. But um, our players are so versatile. And when we select squads, we look at all those scenarios um, when we select a squad. What if we don't, this formation doesn't work? What if that formation doesn't work? So we cover, try to cover all our bases where that's concerned. There seems to be another question. Yeah. Yes, there's it's one more. It talks about mixed gender teams. Um, I, I do, I'll be honest, I'm not sure. Um, as much as we, as we people joke and people say um, Banyana should play Bafana Bafana, um, I think physically uh, it's not possible. I think um, already when you reach a certain age, when you reach 15, 16, the boy is already stronger than the girl in certain, in certain aspects. Um, there is mixed gender football at a lower age um, because girls play in boys teams from as young as seven years old. And I think um, all over the world that happens um, where they have mixed gender. Um, I'm not sure um, if it will happen. Um, that I can't say. Um, it's not up to me to say that. Um, but I know that in, 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 in younger age groups, that definitely does happen. And I think that happens, that helps with development as well as the growth of the individual. Is that the only question that was left? Yeah, I think so. Um, we we having to close soon. So Zaid, do you want to so ask? Is, sorry, Najma, there's one more. There's Another one more. question? Yeah, not a question, rather a comment from Anwar Umar. And he says, since the start of this webinar, I've had a smile on my face. I just think you're an extremely special person, loved every minute of the conversation, and your mural is amazing. And, and it's actually from Wasila. 
Thank you so much. I think, Desiree, I you, think my touched, mother's going to be very excited. Yeah, we're all very excited. Desiree, you've touched a lot on Dryden Street and your primary school days. I was wondering, what was your high school days like? And what was your sports experience at high school days like? High school days were rough. Um, I played Why? football. I played football. I, every opportunity I got, I played football. I played hockey for the school. I played Who were the teachers? For the Who were the teachers that you can recall? Um, Mr. Franzman, there was also the woodwork teacher was very strict. He always used to tell me I wanted to be a boy. Um, the principal, I think the principal was Mr. Milan, Mr. O'Connell. Mr. O'Connell was the funniest teacher. May soul rest in peace. He was the funniest teacher that we had. Um, who else was there? Classmates, classmates. Who were the sports, who, who were the popular you, sports people? Now at, you're asking at, me. At I played school. with I played with whoever wanted to play the game. I who didn't care who it was, who, whether it was a girl or a boy. I didn't care. Who were I the talented care. sports people at at high school that you can recall? Mm. Maybe you remember, and maybe you can remember. <laughs> <laughs> this way it's called menopause <laughs> I'll, 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 co I'll coach our former coach Vera Pao always used to say there's nothing that you can do about age sometimes you mm -hmm. don't remember things. yeah Zaid thank you for your questions and um, and Shamila you know you've made you've you know, embellished this um, interview do you agree um, Tezre they oh, yes. are, most definitely, most yeah. definitely. But but you are you'd 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 be you'd write such an Im, impeccable memoir because like Anwar has said, like there have been so many gems in this conversation. You are a true role model, a wonderful leader, you're an amazing icon for Salt River. I'm so happy your portrait's up there in, in Fenton Road. Um, you deserve it. And you know, one of the things that has come out for me is, is just your passion and the driving force, your fortitude, um, you know, your staying power and um, all of those things have paid off for you. So yes, it comes from your passion for soccer and your, you know, your athletic ability. And like you said, you played soccer, it didn't matter who you were playing with, as long as you could play soccer. And you know what is wonderful is that you've been blessed enough to have a career as, as wonderful as this, as illustrious as this, in something that, you, that you've loved since a child. And um, we wish to thank you. But firstly, before I thank you, I need to thank Anwar Umar, who is our deputy chair, who is like an ever-ready battery. That sounds very cliché but Anwar works so hard to get these things off the ground. I mean, there's Salt River Heritage Society is an amazing team of people. I joined them last year. I feel like I cannot keep up with them. They work as if they are being paid salaries <laughs> and it's all community work. I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, and Anwar is a wonderful stalwart. Um, our secretary, our technical person also works as if he's getting two salaries, Lutfi Umar. Um, Anwar, Lutfi, and Zaid are brothers. Um, they are salt. Oh. They are oh, brothers. Oh, goodness, I didn't know that. They are, and they, I, they make such a difference in the community. I don't know if they like me saying this, but, you know, they work behind the scenes and they make a difference. And uh, salt is so lucky to have them. And Shamla, thank you, Shamla. You are wonderful, wonderful. She's a lecturer at CPUT. She's been there since 2002. She's done so much behind the scenes work in, 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 in rugby particularly. Um, Zaid, keep on doing the great work you do. I know Zaid is also inspirational for the youth. I mean, he's got HC Kapstad. Mm -hmm. Desiree, um, you really, you've been wonderfully inspiring. And um, I just want to do this. Zay, do you want to say something quickly? You want to say something? Um, no, I just want to say thank you to Desiree. 
Thank you for her time. It's a real honor to know that she's from Salt River. I'm looking forward to catch up with you in Fenton Road to take that, that uh, very popular pic with you along that mural. Um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in Cape Town most probably the first two weeks of November. I haven't been home since, since Easter Monday when I had to come to camp. So I'm really looking forward to that two weeks and I'll definitely make a plan to come to, I'll let my brother know that I'm, we now will be there when it's confirmed. Um, if you, and I'll if definitely- you, If we speak definitely. comparatively, if you look at in, in Leeds recently, in the UK in Leeds, there's a mural up of Lucas Gadebe in Leeds portraying yes. his iconic status. In Brazil, in a certain part of Brazil, Ronaldinho is up on a, on a mural as well. Alan Shearer is up in Newcastle. So you really have um, achieving a, a very special achievement by having a mural of you up in, in Fenton. I think it's such a fantastic artistic creative idea of the Heritage Society to have done all these murals. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow to walk around and nostalgically walk around those roads and look at your mural and all the others that are there. And I'm truly, truly humble that um that they um, decided the Salt River Heritage Society. Um, um, I didn't even think that something like that was possible. So, um, you know, it will forever be aged in my brain um, that something wonderful like that was done for me. So I really do appreciate it very, very much. I think it's the first community in the Western Cape that is doing this type of uh, initiative. Yes, I think so too. I haven't seen it anywhere else. I haven't seen it anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. So we're really and proud soon of I'll post, Soon I'll post it all over social media, every <laughs> single day. Once, 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 once the Heritage Day is over and once you have obviously you know, had your the day on, on, and then I'll start posting. I don't want to take the shine away from, from what you've done and what you're saying to do. Yeah. Um, um, Shamila, say something, just something quickly. So just from our side, Desiree, again, it's been an absolute honor to be here and to pose some questions to you tonight and to be a part of this space. Keep shining, keep inspiring, and please convey our excitement and our gratitude to the team. Once I'll again, for that formidable I, I see them. I see them on Sunday. <laughs> Great stuff. Please do against, against the mighty Nigeria. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much, Desiree. Thank, Thank you, Shamila. And then just to remind everybody on Saturday from one until about six, we will start the, the, the um, events. You know, we'll start our first event at um, the top of Kingsley Road. Please join us. There'll be food on sale and there'll be, uh, you know, amazing dignitaries. We can tell you the ambassador, uh, the Palestinian ambassador will be there as well. Um, Judge uh, De, um, Suraj Desai. So really looking forward to having an amazing day. It'll be lovely music, lovely food. Desiree, um, thank you. And like Anwar said, it's just been such a wonderfully um, warm, engaging time with you. We wish you all the best. Thank you. We can look at you every day. You have to come to the salt of it coming see us, but we can look at you every day on, in Fenton Road. Um, all, the, all the very best to you. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you for, and th you know, all the best for your team, for your team, all the success to your team. Thank you thank guys. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. Thanks Najma, thanks Welcome. Shamila, thanks yeah. Salt River Heritage Society. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sage. Thank you, guys. It was a real pleasure. Thank, thank you, audience. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.